from a place we're not allowed to reveal in Hollywood. It's Flash Friday. Oh my God! And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. I got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. Headlights on across North America. Ladies, show us your cans. If you got a nice set of cans, this is a good time to be showing them. Those are my boys out there. The guys with the headlights on, those are our listeners. Reward those guys for their loyalty by showing them your cans, for God's sake. Yes, it's wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about. Call in, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, we kick your ass the hell off the telephone. All you do here is call us at 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Let's go to your calls here. Let's say hi to Damien on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Damien. Hello, Tom. How you doing? Do you care? Do I really care. Yes, I do. Doing great. Hey, uh, translation for that? Hola, Tomas. <laughs> uh, you know, man, I've been watching that show you've been talking about. I've been to Cartagena once. It's amazing. It's oh, amazing. Oh, yes. I mean, I saw a scene you're talking about, 30 girls out in the pool, you know? I'm Mexican, but I trade a Mexican woman for a Colombian in a heartbeat. By the way, I think most of those were Mexican women, as you may or may not know. This is a re yeah. they're, they're, what they're doing is they're remaking the Colombian show in Mexico. So that's what you were seeing. Oh, was that in Mexico then? I thought it was in Colombia, but you know what? I've been to Colombia once, and it was worth it. It was worth it. And, oh, I, I, know, I, I, by I, the way, I, I, by the way, very few Americans there. I, I didn't see any Americans there. Well, the thing is, you know, all the kid, kidnapping and all that going on, people are afraid of it. But with women like that, I'd take that risk in a heartbeat. <laughs> I and know, you know what, what you I, mean. I've been listening for you uh, for about 10 years. First time calling. I'm nervous as hell. But, you know, I had to call in as soon as I heard that uh, that show you were talking about and. uh I hope all the guys out there uh, listen to that show. It's 10 o'clock on Telemundo, which in Southern California is on Channel 52. Check your local listings. It's absolutely... I, I'm telling you, there's not a guy yeah. I know who wouldn't love watching that show. Oh, it's just amazing. Well, Tom, that was all I had. And uh, take me out Pablo Escobar style. Oh! If you have it. Uh, well, uh, what would you like as a sound effect for that? Well, let's say uh, uh, snorting a coke land and some AK 47s, huh? Let's see what we got. Here we go. Yeah. 1 800 5 800 Tom is our telephone number. Here comes Jack on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Great. Hey, I just had a question. I know it's last Friday, but I'm in Ventura. And uh, the women are here on with the plan, so I had to call and ask another different kind of question. Uh, why is it that you broadcast from a different studio as opposed to the other talent on 97.1? Uh, because I like being alone in my own <laughs> domain. You don't, you don't play well with others? I've uh, been in my own domain now for many years. In fact, I haven't been inside a radio station on a regular basis doing a radio show. 
I'm thinking back, and I think it was uh, 1994. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow, that's cool. You know, I, I like to avoid all of the problems that existed in office. Politics, <laughs> uh, sexual yeah, harassment videos, yeah. uh, all that stuff. Uh, you know, you can't sexually harass anybody if you're hermetically sealed in your own place. That That is correct. Yes, and, you can't, is. and you can't be accused of it either. So I like to stay out of the radio station and uh, do my own thing. Well, speaking of your own thing, I'm sure you got like an agent or a publicist, right? I've got both. Okay, well, how come you don't, like, try to hook up something like uh, like a little TV program, at least for Like Us 101? Uh, sure I, you get a broader audience with that. Well, uh, here's the thing. I, I People have asked me why we don't have a TV simulcast of our show the way Howard Stern has done it. Yeah, I mean, like, Spike Channel would be perfect for you, you know? Yeah, well, I believe, uh, well, first of all, I, as far as getting inside the radio studio, I believe in the magic of radio. I don't like cameras in the studio. Because, frankly, when I was a kid listening to the radio, I liked imagining what the studio looked like, how big it was, what the people looked like. Um, I think uh, all this putting webcams in the studio takes all of the magic and mystery out of radio and just turns it into a commodity. Like You start looking like every other dork on YouTube just sitting there in a room. <laughs> I, I, I believe in the magic and the power and the showmanship of radio. Unfortunately, there's an awful lot of people in the radio business right now who have forgotten about this, who have forgotten what makes radio special. And it's the reason why so many radio stations find themselves scrambling to compete with satellite radio or uh, uh, iPods or uh, MP3s or what have you. Right. Uh, it's simply because... Uh, you know, if all radio stations are, are jukeboxes with commercials, the jukeboxes that don't play commercials are going to win. Radio's got to be more than that. When I was a kid, radio was theater. It was big. And, uh, you know, times change, but there's no reason I can't do that kind of show. So I refuse to allow cameras in the studio, and I refuse to work at the radio station. I work in my own place, and I like to create magic here where people can't really see what we're doing. Well, I can appreciate that. You're a purist. I'm not just yeah, a purist. I, I, I <laughs> want to make this product as good as I can. And in order That's to what do I mean. it... Like this 101, you get on, you get a, just like this 101 segment, only on Thursday nights on Spike or something like that. You reach such a broader audience, you bring the word to so many more... I'm people. not convinced you reach a broader audience on a cable channel. We have more listeners on this show than many cable shows. Oh, uh, believe me, if they're playing something besides CSI every night, guys are going to tune in. You, the other thing is that uh, <laughs> people are always surprised to hear this, but it's really true. I mean, there's a lot of people in radio who don't make much money. But if you've been doing it as long and as successfully as I have, it pays better than television. And, really? yeah, and, uh, you know. Uh, the amount of time you have to spend getting made up and changing clothes and blocking camera angles and rehearsing and sitting down and reading from a teleprompter. Well, you don't got to sit there with a pink mohawk on, Tom. You just, you know, do I'm thing. telling you, you know, you can't walk into a TV show. They, they start primping you and spraying <laughs> you brown and uh, highlighting your hair. And, I mean, that's what they start doing. Right. And, and uh you know, I, I just think that for the amount of work you have to do and the little amount of money they have offered when we have had these conversations with TV people in the past, I've got the best job in the world. Yes, you do. <laughs> I agree with that. So if people want to hear about Like Us 101, they'll have to turn on the radio. Yeah. Yeah, and I wish you could get the word out to these girls of Ventura because there's no headlights on. Well, no we, we always ask that you don't call up and whine about that, and there you are doing <laughs> Hey, can you blow me up, Tom? I'll blow you up, baby. Here you go. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Paul on the Tom Liges Show. Hello. You know, as far as, far as a, hey, Tom, how's it going? I'm doing great. Good, good, good. Uh, I've, been, I've been listening to you since uh, 2000. And uh, it's one of the, you know, you know, but by far this is the best show on on terrestrial uh, radio. Thank you. So yeah, I was I tried calling in earlier um, this week. You actually had a segment on the economy, 
and how bad the economy is doing. I'm actually a a, um, a, a gold broker. I, I trade trade our precious metals, and uh, and um, uh, it's really incredible. What, I mean, what's going on with the stock market with all the with all the equity uh, stocks and indexes and things of that sort taking taking a dive. And quite frankly, in the past week, uh, gold has gone up. You know, I think 10 percent or, you know, $50 in the past couple of days. You know, the reason why I was calling was I wanted to get your thoughts on gold and, 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 um, and uh, you know, as far as your thoughts on, on, on hedging, you know, uh, people's portfolio against, against inflation. and against Well, you inflation. asked the right man. Uh, I'll tell you what. First of all, um, I, I'm with you. Uh, and uh, I do know that precious metals and other commodities are going through the roof. Having said that, uh, I believe, just like I do with stocks, I believe in diversification. I would never right. own just gold. So I own a mutual fund that owns gold and other precious metals. Uh, that fund today alone went up 3%. Yes. Today. Yes. Yeah, Um Gold itself, I mean, what my, what my business is, is we, is we actually trade the actual metal and, and bars and coins and things of that sort. So it's not a, like an, uh, like an ETF, it's, you know, it's the actual, actual, uh, as far as a metal. But gold just today it went up like, you know, $15 just, just today. And in the past two days, it's gone up over $50 in the stock market in, in the, you know, in the contrary, it went, it went down, you know, as far as I believe over 300 points in the past week or so. Right. And, uh, it has definitely, uh, what you say, calling it a hedge, uh, it, it, you're absolutely right. It is a hedge. Uh, I own a precious metals fund I'm very, very happy with that is up, uh, over 12% since I invested in it less than six months ago. Wow. Uh, I am in uh, an energy fund uh, that I invested in uh, under three years ago. It's up over 54% mm -hmm. uh, during that period of time. And I own two commodities funds. Uh, I'll tell you the exact numbers. I invested uh, $170,000 in a particular uh, commodities fund on May 8th. Uh, that okay. is now up to one hundred and eighty-six thousand dollars. I made sixteen thousand dollars in Just, two months, in a month or so. Not, in six weeks. Yeah, yeah. It, it's in. That's almost ten percent. Uh, the other fund I'm in uh, is is a similar return, um, but it's uh, you know uh, different managers, and again, I try to spread my risk. Right. So yes, the answer is yes. Uh, because I don't think the average person knows what to do with a pork belly, where they're going to store it or how they're going to get rid of it, uh, much less a contract for a pork belly or frozen orange juice or other commodities. Uh, I, I recommend for our average listener that they get into mutual funds as a portion of their portfolio, uh, any one of these funds totaling no more than 5%. Yeah, we we recommend that you have anywhere from five to twenty five, excuse me, five to twenty percent of your portfolio are diversified in a hard asset, not in like an. I mean, it, as far as like a stock or a fund, it, you know, it's fine and that's good to have within your portfolio. But what, I mean, it, it, as far as far as what is your take or opinion on having actual gold in like a store for you or? Uh, in a safety deposit box or in a safe. Or well, I think, I, I, I think if nuclear war is about to break out, that's probably a good idea. But I think that for the average investor, uh, the average investor doesn't know what to do with gold, where to buy it, how to unload it when they're done with it, how to judge when uh, prices have gone up high enough. Yeah. Uh, I, I, the average, I, sure, you could make more money holding, holding it yourself. Right. But but you don't know what you're doing. And the cost of having somebody store it for you, clearly you don't do that for free for people. You charge them for that. A very uh, nominal fee. It's a very, very nominal fee. But by the way. it's a fee. And, and uh, also you take a commission for what you sell, etc. I right. have a mutual fund uh, for precious metals. I pay uh, no commission, no load, uh, an expense ratio of under 30 basis points. So okay. uh, I have very low costs. And I don't have to do any work. I don't have to go down, drive down, pick up a gold brick, deliver it to my safe deposit box, uh, or have you deliver it and charge me a fee to do it. Uh, right. So what I'm saying is, I, yes, I, I, I'm with you as far as it being a good hedge. 
against inflation, a good hedge against the stock market. You're right. Absolutely right. But I don't recommend that the average yutz out there try to do it himself. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, and that's, quite frankly, my job is to... Uh, to convince the average yutz to do something that's too sophisticated for him to do? <laughs> Uh, well, well, uh, I mean, it's not that complicated, and most people think, you, you know, we... No, we no, actually, here's the I, complicated part. Yeah. You know, gold goes up like this, but it also has periods when it goes down. Correct. And the average moron doesn't know when those periods <laughs> are. <laughs> and you know that as well as I do. <laughs> well... That's Keep in mind that for, th for thirty years, gold. For thirty years, other. you you conveniently forget the thirty years when gold went nowhere. Yeah, 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 and and, and that's the reason why uh, people should have a portfolio to where when uh, you know with stock equity stocks things of that sort to when when gold is down a dollar is strong then then their stocks are normally performing well. All uh, I know is that with this mutual fund I own. Uh, I am making money hand over fist. Granted, if I had you store a gold brick for me, maybe I'd make a little more. But how would I know when to sell it? That's, actually, that's not true. Actually, uh, um, the company, you know, as far as that I work for, and I won't say the name on the air, but, um, we, I mean, as far as we actually have a buyback program where we buy back the metals from the For less than market from value, from so you take another piece off the top. Not, come, not, not come the on. case. Come on. Not you don't case. buy it for market not value. Why would you do that? Well, it's not market, it's not market value, but the, the buyback is, you know, to sell what we sell it for versus what we buy it back for, you know, as far as everything is all up front and is very transparent. So. I'm not you know, saying it's not uh, transparent. I'm saying, though, it's still another form of a fee. Correct. Well, okay. We all do this for free. <laughs> well, now, I know you know, but the average yeah, person yeah. doesn't know that, you see? And that's right. why I advise the average person not to do what you're recommending, but instead to get into a diversified mutual fund that is diversified in the field of precious metals. I see. I see. I see. You don't, well, I mean, you, you, uh, you, yeah. you, you, you don't have the same potential to make the same amount if you bought gold, stored it, and then sold it at the absolute tippity top of the market and before it plummeted. Uh, but by the same token, there's less risk. Well, yeah, I mean... Uh, and yeah. I don't have to stay up nights worrying about whether the Fed's going to raise interest rates. I don't have to stay up nights worrying about whether tomorrow's the day gold is going to drop or the dollar is going to increase or whatever. Right, right. <clears throat> we, yeah. you, know, I, you know what? I'm fascinated by all that stuff. But I live in the real world with with real people, and real people don't care about that stuff and don't follow it, and are more likely to lose their shirts right. than, than to make the kind of money that you might make or I might make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's you know, it's very fascinating what's going on in the uh, as far as in the market uh, right now, and uh, we are uh, you know expecting gold to hit anywhere from you know five thousand dollars and up and higher. I mean. That's what according to you know Bloomberg and other analysts are saying. So it's very very fascinating. But analysts are frequently wrong. Huh? Analysts are frequently wrong. Analysts said Enron was going up in a straight line too. Right. Right. Well, we'll we'll see what happens. So far, so far, everything that they're saying is uh, coming to pass. And uh, well, I like I say, I've got uh, a nice. Uh, Five to ten percent of my portfolio in precious metals, and I'm very happy with the result. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the main thing. I just wanted to, it, 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 uh, you know, again, we kind of, you know, we kind of disagree on the on the form of of, of the metals, but but that's uh, only because you're in the business and you stand tend to stand you say you stand to make more if people do what you say. Right. right. Not because it's necessarily what's best for the listener. Correct, and 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 you know our our job, of course, is to do you know what's best for our clients and have their have their best. No, uh, come on, your job is like my job. Your job is to do what's best for you, <laughs> your company, and your clients come maybe third or fourth. In <laughs> okay, in my case, well, I do what's uh, best for I do what's best for the advertiser. Okay, that's right, what I do. Right. Right, uh, but uh, so does that always mean that's what's best for the listener or the public? No, no. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's my that's my personal philosophy, and that's how I 
I take care of my, my uh, clients. As I, I totally of, understand and uh, respect that, and you've been very honest with me, too, and I respect that as well. And uh, yeah. I, I really do appreciate the call. I do, too. Thank you for uh, talking to me, Tom. Can you, uh, can you blow me up? You know I can. Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. 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 I was passing downtown on the 10 freeway going east, and I got flashed by jailbait. Not one, but two. Oh, my God. I almost rear-ended the person in front of me. For people that don't have stickers, patience is the key. It will reward you. Oh, Tom. Thank you for inventing Flash Friday. I love you. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likey Show. The Tom Likey Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Amelia. Hello. Hello. Yes. Just... Uh, just great. Your phone's not doing too great, though. Hold on one second. Yeah, I'm out here where I don't get service too good. I was calling to uh, say that I don't like how you're very uh, degrading to women, talking about the cans and stuff. Well, darling, uh, this is a show for guys. Uh, you're yeah, welcome to tune in. I bet a lot of women listen to you more than you think because I have well, to. Uh, but the point is, I, the, the, anybody can listen who wants to, but. Our target audience is men. Yeah, I understand that, but you still have to uh, realize that other people are going to listen to your I, I don't really care who listens. I don't care. If I offend people who are not in my target audience, I don't care. That's how I know I'm doing the show correctly. That's pretty lame. Nothing lame about it. That's, it's basic demographics. It's basic marketing. It's basic broadcasting. That, yeah, that's right. That you're just a salesman. You just care about... You know, selling your product. That's my job. I, well, I'm glad you. I'm glad you understand how it works. Couldn't care less if I'm offending you. Doesn't matter. You know, your show would be a lot better because some of the stuff you. I know say, my show is as good as it needs to be. Here's how much better do you get? How much better do you get than being number one, sister? You know, you number one. You're just there to sell product. I don't know why you're excited about being number one when no, you're, you're not there. In because thing. that's my job is selling products. My job is selling advertising. That's my job. And talking about how much money you make. That's right. You just sit there and talk about how much money you make. Well, nobody forces you to tune in. Nobody forces you to tune in. Nobody forces you to tune in, sister. You can listen to anything you like. You just... You know, I have to spend time with my fiance, and this is the only thing he'll sit there and listen to. Uh, I like to sit here and enjoy maybe eventually he'll get the message and dump your ass. Maybe eventually he'll get the message and dump your ass. Huh? Maybe eventually he'll maybe eventually he'll get the message uh, that I'm sending out to him and dump your ass. Dump me? <laughs> yeah, right. The best yeah. thing that ever happened to best him. Best thing me. that ever happened to him. Yeah, oh, right. Goodness. And be lonely and listen to you for the rest of your life. Oh, maybe your maybe your fiance. No, no, man. You know you got something else coming to you with your big old hat and all your riches. What if one day it's gone? What are you gonna do then? Uh, darling, it's not gonna be gone. I'm well invested. I've oh, saved. Really? I've planned. You know, whatever, yes. What happens if, if something about the stock, uh, the stock markets crash? What are you going to do then? Darling, it's not all in stocks. It's in precious metals. It's in real estate. It's all over the precious place. Precious metals. Yes. That's all you got. What, what, what else do you have other than your money? Darling, uh, what more do I need? A life. I have a life, darling. I have I have the best job in the world. And when you have money, power, well, and fame... When you have money, power, and fame, when you have money, power, and fame, as I do, sweetheart, you can have anything you want, and I do. Oh, like, wait, so you're really happy inside? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Darling, if you ever had money, you'd know, you'd know how happy I am. When you sound so bitter. I'm not bitter at all. Are you kidding me? This is great. You sound bitter. Uh, yeah, well, I don't care if you think I sound bitter. I'm the happiest man on earth. I don't care what you think. I really don't care what you think. I know you don't, because you're just a big mouth bitch. You're just another big mouth bitch. And, you you know, if if it wasn't for you getting boned by your boyfriend, he would dump you in a second. Oh, yeah, right. Do you even know him? I don't Do have to know. know him? Does he have a penis? No. 
Oh, wow, if that's the kind of guy you like. I'm just kidding, I'm kidding. Yes, he does have a penis. He does. Okay, well, if he has a penis, chances are he agrees with me. No. That's just uh, big head people like you. Oh, yeah. All well, you care about is one thing. Where's your heart at? Uh, Do you darling, have one, or you know what? Laying in your penis? Uh, darling, uh, people who don't have money, they're the ones who talk about where's your heart at. But you know what? I've got money, and I've got whatever I want in life, and it's fantastic. Money, but, you know, that's not the only thing I want in life, because when I get old and rich... You don't have money? Are you kidding me? You're, you're a trailer trasher. You're a trailer trasher. You are a trailer trasher. You are another, just another trailer trasher. 19 and engaged, another trailer trasher. You're just going to be sitting there with nobody. Oh, miserable. darling, I have all the people I want because what do for you then? I've got money, power, and fame, dear. I've got all the people I need. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, by right. the way, I'm sure you're the hottest chick. Look, I'm sure you're the hottest chick in the trailer park. And I'm sure everybody was very impressed when your boyfriend went to BJ's and picked you up in a gadget ring. I'm sure. Just because I, I live out in Rockwell? Oh, no, it has nothing. Darling, we got trailer treasures. We got trailer treasures. Darling, we got trailer treasures right here in Southern California. Believe me, it has nothing to do with where you live. You're a 19 year old fiance, and that's all I need to know. He's not 19. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about you. Oh, so, oh, I'm not, oh, because I'm getting married at 19. Right. That's right. Oh, Trailer yeah. trash. Trailer okay. trash. Because I'm 19 years old. Trailer trash. That's right. That's real good. That's real great. Well, it's true. How do you say that that's true? Uh, let's start with this. What? Let's start with this, dear. Let's start with this, dear. Pro probably, probably since uh, the maternity ward. That's fine, uh, darling. Uh, what what university are you attending? Do what? What university are you SMU. attending? SMU. SMU. Yeah. What are you What are you majoring in? Business. In what? In business. I work for an eye doctor. So oh, my. Oh, my. Nowhere in business. You, you might as well study something else. You don't even know me. You don't even know what kind of... I know what I need to know. You're a big mouth bitch. You're a you big mouth me. bitch. You're trailer you trash. Get married Getting married at 19. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. You can think I'm trailer trash. Oh, I know you are. But what I will tell you one thing. Whenever I get old, I will be happy with myself. Well, so will I. People who love me. So I will I. I so will I. And you, you'll be divorced like so many others. You'll be divorced like the 80% of people who get married at 19. You'll be divorced like 80% of them are. That's what will happen to you. I don't care what you believe in. If, if the person you're with decides to dump your sorry ass after you gain 50 pounds when you get married, uh, you, you will be divorced whether you like it or not. Oh, yes, they do, dear. If he's a guy, he's got the attitude I've got. You better not gain 50 pounds or he'll dump you. He will dump you. When you cut your hair short, when you cut your hair short and you gain 50 pounds, he's going to dump your sorry ass. You watch. After you have the first baby or two and your boobies are sagging and you got that fupa going on, he'll dump your ass. He's going to dump me? Yes, he will. <laughs> Only to the cold-hearted angle like you would do something like that. I hope. I tell you what, I hope he's hearing my words right now because if he knows what's good for him, he will not marry you. Oh, you're just so full of crap. You, you just love hearing yourself talk just to talk. Well, about. darling, I'm not the one to turn the radio up. You are. I, I don't listen to you because I want to listen to you. Nobody forces you, dear. I don't listen to you because I want to listen to you, like I said. So you, you, I, you always I, doing things you, you don't want to do? I don't want to listen to you if you weren't all about just selling your Listen to product. you. I don't care if you want to. I don't care if you like it or you don't. I couldn't care less. What do I care? Why do I care what you think? I couldn't care less what you think. Oh, she hung up. Gee. I love that.
Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Were you a virgin? No, man. I, I, I've been with like, hundreds a lot of, of women in my day. Hundreds days. and hundreds. Mother's best friend. Grandmother's best friend. Girlfriend. Mothers. He's been with every woman on earth. Everybody. Look at the white faces. Everybody with a female name, he's been with them. I wow. wouldn't say every woman, but I mean, any woman that will let me. That's my problem. Any woman that's that a much smaller list. I think that's the biggest case of virginitis I've ever heard of. It's the Tom Likey Show. Thank you for tuning in. Flash Friday, wide open telephones at 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Let's continue with your telephone calls. Let's say hello here to, uh, boy, to so many of these. Wow. I'm going to try um, Brett. Brett on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Brett. How you doing today, brother? Doing great. Hey, uh, after last weekend, man, I had to call you and tell you about this. So uh, last weekend was my buddy's birthday, and me and all my buddies, we planned a trip out up into Big Bear. Just to go out there for the weekend, go fishing, just the boys, go out there, party. We had a cabin, four-bedroom four cabin, uh Two, there's two stories, game room, hooked up, bachelor pad. And so I was looking forward to this for two weeks. And the day we leave, I find out that I'm riding up there with my buddy and his girlfriend. And I'm just like, what? And then I find out that everybody else's girlfriend was going too. So this whole trip that turned out to be just for the guys turned out to be guys and all the girlfriends. So... My buddy, whose birthday it was, she was pregnant. And so she's just up there bitching about every little thing. And on Saturday, we had gotten on one of those party boats that holds up to like 10, 15 people. And we went on the lake, and we're fishing, and we took some beer out there with us. You know, we you know took out a little bit of weed and everything. And we're just having a good old time. And these girls were just doing nothing but complaining the whole entire trip. I'm hot. I, I'm getting sunburned. This sucks. Blah, blah, blah. And I, Tom, I could not believe these girls. They just killed the whole entire trip. We had this all planned out to go up there, find some girls, take them back to the cabin, you know, and just have fun. But it turned out to be uh, just a, a, a Why did you let that happen? I didn't, I didn't know until the day we were leaving. And when I was riding up there, my buddy and his girlfriend, he's feeding her chips as she's driving up there. He's feeding her chips one by one, and she's licking his fingers the whole time. And I'm sitting back there just going, oh, my God, this isn't happening. This is not happening. And, you know, Tom, I live by your rules. You know, I don't have a girlfriend. I'm 22 years old. I just go out and I have fun. And I tell girls right off the bat, this is not going to be anything serious, and I just tell it like it is. And you know what, Tom? You're right. You will get more ass than you will know by doing that. And this that, that trip just it was it just was a disaster, Tom. Oh, I'm sure it was. I, I'm sorry that happened. If it were me and somebody brought his pregnant girlfriend, I'd be going, "Look, it's me or her. Take one." That's what I'd do. Judy on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hello? Is that a question or a statement? No. That's my name is Dee Dee, not Judy. What is it? Dee Dee. Is my... Oh. Now, darling, you have to watch your mouth. We're on the air. Let me tell you something. I live in a fine mobile home park. Oh, you are trailer trash. I see. You are angry trailer trash calling in because we talked about trailer trash. I'm angry, baby. I'm not angry in the least except oh, for yes, angry you are. that you don't know. You say another curse word on the air, you're gone. What? 
You can call me trash, but you, I can't call yeah, you. You cannot curse on the air. It's a federal law. You can't do it. Federal law. Let me tell you something about the law. Law is you. Let me tell you something about the law. I'm not going to let you break it again. Unbelievable. And you are trailer trash, you filthy piece of crap. Skanky bitch. And I can say skanky bitch. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Marcus is listening to the online stream in good old Juneau, Alaska. On the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Dad. Hi, son. How have you been? I really care. I have been just great ever since I haven't had to be on trial in Juneau, Alaska. Life's been a lot better. <laughs> yeah, I would hate that. You know that happened. You know we spent uh, the better part of the winter of 2002 in Juneau, Alaska. Doing? I wasn't here at that point. Oh, I was on trial. And I was doing my show from oh, Juno. I did hear that. I did hear that. Okay. Yes. So as uh, long as I don't have to be on trial in Juno, Alaska, I'm a happy boy. Atta boy. What can I do for you? Hey, you know, I called a little while ago to talk about, you know, you were talking about the, the New York attitude, how America hates the attitude in New York. Yeah. And that's the reason I called, but then I've been sitting here listening to the show, and my God, what a great show. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, that's, that's why I called. You know, I'm an underground firefighter. I work in coal and metal, non-metal, and I go to these seminars and trainings all over the country, and when there's guys from New York there, I don't know if I can say this word douchebag. Yeah, you can say it. They are complete douchebags about it. By I've been further underground. These kids been away from home, but because they're from the city of New York, what we have to learn, we're there to learn it from them, so to speak. It's it's kind of it's just a huge pain in the ass because of that mentality because they went through 9/11. Okay. Bless their heart. They went through one of the most horrific events our country's ever seen. Bless them. I love them for it. But now all of a sudden there are these prima donna jackasses, and it goes completely down the line, not even just, you know, we talk about Donald Trump. We talk about George Steinbrenner. We talk about Joe Torrey. Joe Torrey is the reason I fell in love with the city of New York. Now you got him in L.A. He is just absolutely phenomenal as far as I'm concerned. That's that's the reason I fell in love with the city of New York. But now that these firefighters have got this prima donna crap going, it's the exact same thing that what you're talking about. And it refers all the way up the level to Donald Trump's, the Steinbrenner's. Uh, I make a ton of money. I make a ton of money doing what I do. And it has nothing to do with where I'm from or... You see, you see where I'm going with this, Tom? Oh, no, I absolutely do. But in New York, that's the center of the universe. Just ask them. They'll tell you. Yeah, and ask them while they're at a training seminar in Reno, Nevada, or in Albuquerque, New Mexico, or in Fresno, California, or where else did I go? Arlington, Texas. Guys from New York come down. They're complete douchebags about it and say, well, Jesus, you came from everywhere around the country. You're going to learn from us. Well, guess what, buddy? I've been further in fire, and you've been away from home. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense, and that, that sounds awfully familiar. Out of time, Marcus. I thank you. Our email address is my name, tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.